Welcome to lesson one of the Nelson Nash Institute's IBC for Consumer video series. In this lesson, we want to give you a background of who we are, how we got associated with Nelson, and became board members of the Institute, and also share some personal anecdotes of our relationship with Nelson. Uh, first of all, uh, Nelson Nash is the developer and discoverer of the, of the infinite banking concept and the best-selling author of the book, Becoming Your Own Banker which has sold thousands and thousands and thousands of copies since it was published in the year 2000. Infinite banking, simply put, is privatized banking at the you and me level to reclaim the banking function in your life using the permanent cash value whole life insurance policy as the platform. Let me give you a quick introduction of who I am and how I got affiliated with Nelson. You, you might be surprised, but you know, I am his son-in-law. We did meet in 1979 under unusual circumstances. I met him two days before my wedding to his daughter, Kim. We had a personal relationship for many years, and I, was, I consider myself his guinea pig for IBC because I did buy his first, my first policy from him a day after I met him and a day before I married his daughter. In 2000, I started working with him informally and helping him develop his PowerPoint presentations for his IBC seminar, which he gave throughout the country to many, many, many insurance agents. In 2004, I formally retired from the United States Army and started work with him full time. At that point, I was his administrative assistant and did much of the background work in order to free him for lecturing and, and further writing. In 2005, Nelson and I started the IBC Think Tank, which is our annual event for IBC practitioners and invited guests. In 2012, we started the Infinite Banking Institute. At that time, Nelson, myself, Carlos, and Bob were the board of directors. After a year, it was decided that the Infinite Banking Institute was, was not a good name for our entity. We wanted to give honor to Nelson and maintain his legacy, so we changed the name to the Nelson Nash Institute. And that was about 2013, same year that we introduced the IBC Practitioners course. Carlos, can you share with us briefly how you met Nelson? Well, that's, uh, that's an interesting story uh, for me, actually, because um, it was unique. Um, as, uh, as I've already mentioned, I'm a business owner, and I happened to be in the office of a, of a businessman. And I looked across his desk, and I saw um, Nelson's book, Becoming Your Own Banker. Becoming Your Own Banker. And uh, the, the title, you know, completely captivated me. I mean, how, how can you become your own banker? But here was a book that was professing to tell its readers that you could actually do that. And so I asked the business owner about the book. And he said, you know, I don't even really know what it's, what it's about. He said, yeah, if you want it, you can have it. So I took the book, I took it home. And I started reading it, and uh, <clears throat> I was captivated by the book. I, I'm not saying that it was easy to understand, because it wasn't. Uh, on one sense, he was talking about life insurance, and on another page, he was talking about banking, and so I didn't know which one it was that he was referring to. What, what was he talking about here? Um, later, I found out that at the tail end of his book, he had uh, his address on there, and that he lived in Birmingham, Alabama. That's just a few sh short hours away from Nashville, where I live. So I um, picked up the phone and called him, and he, he himself answered the phone. And so we had a, a pleasant little conversation there for a few moments, and I asked if I could, could could come to Birmingham and, and meet him and he, he gladly said yes of course you can and we set a time and a date and but that was my first uh, exposure to Nelson Nash. Uh, um, there was an interesting story after that I'll, I'll tell you about it another time but it, that was my actual first time of knowing, meeting Nelson Nash. Thanks Carlos. Bob can you tell us how you first met Nelson? Well sure so my background is I was an academic economist and actually I was going around um, the country w with people associated with the Mises Institute giving lectures to the public warning them about Federal Reserve policy you know how that had contributed to the housing bubble and just trying to wake the people up to that uh, element 
and I was a member of what was called the Austrian School of Economics that, of course, Nelson was also a fan of. And then I was in Nashville, Tennessee, and I got contacted by Carlos, actually. Um, he was the one who, who introduced me to IBC. And what happened was Carlos was using a study guide that I had written, um, a study guide to a, a book by Murray Rothbard, because Carlos had been working on a, a PowerPoint presentation. He was going around at the time giving presentations to commercial bankers explaining how fractional reserve banking worked and why that was such a problem. And they, you know, I thought that was kind of a reckless thing for him to be doing, but turned out they were, they were grateful. It's just, we had no idea we were doing that. that. This is interesting stuff. And then at some point in the relationship, he gives me Nelson's book, Becoming Your Own Banker. So tell me what you think about this. And I read it and I thought, oh, this is a, you know, charming man and a lot, a lot of wisdom, but there's like six things wrong with this. But because Carlos was so sharp and, you know, such an astute business person, I thought, I'll give it a shit. And I didn't want to hurt his feelings. And then the, 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 the stumbling block, and Nelson heard me say this many times, um, the stumbling block, was I didn't know how whole life worked, right. even though I had a PhD in economics from a big university. We, just, we never learned that kind of stuff. And so the more I studied IBC, it was like, oh, you know what? There's only five things really wrong with this. And then after a while, there's only four things wrong, because now I understand what, he, what Nelson meant. And then after a while, after the last thing went, I was like, how come everyone's not doing this? A bunch of idiots. And so that's, that's the way it progressed with me. So the first time though I actually met him, I think it was, I was a speaker at the think tank that you guys held. You had me as like an after dinner speaker. I think it was in February of 2009. Cause it was right, it was after the financial crisis had hit. And that's, you know, where I, I saw some of Nelson's seminar and, and that's things, things took off. And then what ended up happening, how I came to be on the board of directors uh, to, to work with you guys more closely was um, Carlos and I wrote our book, How Privatized Banking Really Works. That, you know, there's a whole other story about that that we won't go into right now. Sort of marrying Austrian economics and IBC, because Carlos realized IBC is the way to implement privatized banking right away, uh, one household at a time. So we wrote our book, that sort of put us on the map in terms of the IBC community. And what happened was uh, life insurance professionals would contact Carlos and me, want us to go out to their city and give presentations to the public to explain how this stuff worked. But after a while, you know, initially, we just knew all the people because you and Nelson knew them and you could vouch for them. So we knew that they were, you know, we were putting the public in good hands. But as this thing grew, we realized at some point, we're not gonna know who these people are that wanna hire us. And we realized the need for forming the IBC practitioner program, right. which, you know, was this, this training program so that we could, in good conscience, push the public to the graduates of our program, knowing they've been trained in, in how to set up a proper IBC policy. Right. And so it was through all those, uh, all, all, all that history is, is how I ended up sitting here with you guys, even though I started out just as an academic economist. Mm -hmm. Great, great, thank you. We, when we wrote How Privatized Banking Really Works, which was shortly after the financial crisis, um, we had already done a very extensive study of the life insurance agent, you and I. Uh, uh, and we had um, we tried to understand what, you know, what the life insurance industry was all about. Neither Bob or I were life insurance salesmen, and, and, and so we didn't, we didn't really know specifically what, what was involved that Nelson kept talking about in, in becoming your own banker and what kind of product to use. Mm -hmm. But we did the, we did the legwork and we, we visited with uh, uh, many of the life insurance companies or the CEOs of those companies. They let, let, they let us speak to a lot of the investment officers of these firms and they were explaining to us how they would invest their, you know, their assets in order to provide life insurance. and. Um, we read all the textbooks that are available uh, to, to understand and uh, <clears throat> when How Privatized Banking Really Works came out, uh, it was a hit because in that particular book we were talking about how to integrate Austrian economics with the infinite banking concept. So we, we gave audiences the first introduction to what uh, the infinite banking concept was, and we started receiving a lot of calls uh, from, guess what, uh, financial professionals that wanted us to come into their city and give talks, and, uh, and so we gladly did it at first. I mean, we were, we were going out almost every week 
And we noticed that these uh, financial professionals that would hire us to come in were loading up the, the, the room with all kinds of people. We didn't know who the people were. Uh, they, were they were clients or maybe it was other, other financial professionals. We didn't know. Uh, they all seemed to like the concept of IBC. And we started getting the impression that they were selling to these people that they were inviting. Um, <laughs> I, what yeah. they were considering to be IBC, but, but Bob and I didn't know what they were selling. Right. And so we started realizing that surely there was a problem uh, and we started seeing some, some things come out. Uh, the idea, uh, as David said, the idea of, of, of you know, securing uh, a place for the infinite banking uh, concept to, to expand properly was to put it into a platform of a course. Right, yeah. Well, you know, I look at the, the, your book, How Privatized Banking Really Works. What, to me, the, the, the importance of that, that book was it, besides, you know, obviously it linked IBC to Austrian economics, but it, you know, Nelson's focus was on the typical American family, okay, and how they could control the, their, the banking function at the family level, control the 34.5% of the interest that's flowing out one way. So it was focused on how you, as the individual, can, can control your cash flow, okay. What privatized banking brought to the table, in my estimation, it, it talked about, you know, the, the national economic level with fractional reserve banking on how that, because that's a, a plank in the, in the sound money platform, right? And so it expanded that, and Nelson was thrilled, okay, when you guys put that book together, because he, he knew that, and he supported it 100%, but he never put it down uh, in word and in ink. Yeah, and I think, you know, as we sit here and reminisce about why did we form the practitioner program, there mm -hmm. we were sort of attacking Mm -hmm. this this problem of oh gee there's a lot of people out there claiming to know IBC mm -hmm. uh, that's in a sense kind of what we're doing now with this video course for the consumer that there's a lot of stuff on YouTube people mm -hmm. life insurance professionals putting out videos purporting to show oh this is how you can use cash value level or they might even be right. using IBC terminology even though they're not affiliated with us and you know some of it it might be fine, but right. some of it's not so good. Mm -hmm. And so that's partly what we're doing here is to say, mm -hmm. you know, we, we can vouch for our video series. You want to learn IBC from the people who knew Nelson personally. You know, this this is IBC, the way it works is, as Nelson envisioned it. Right. So, you know, YouTube is a huge platform out there. Videos are easier to watch and whatever, and everybody wants to, to watch a, a video instead of read a book. But let me tell let me tell the audience right now that, that uh, you know, our video series, the, you know, the Consumer Course, for IBC, it's hopefully it's gonna it's gonna provide you a great reference and and, and uh, baseline for what the becoming your own banker is all about. But please, you know, make the effort to read the book Becoming Your Own Banker, and also our latest book, The Case for IBC. Yeah, Carlos, you know, uh, you, we weren't concerned about the agents that we train selling bad policies. We we're concerned about all the references and all the resources that were flowing around the internet. Uh, that, that, that agents were using, and they developed their own perspective on what IBC was about, and they're the ones that developed bad policy. So we're gonna have 12 videos in this series. And as we said before, it's aimed at the American and Canadian consumer. And we wanna give you a comprehensive, succinct knowledge of IBC. So when you seek out one of our graduates, one of our IBC practitioners, you'll have the baseline necessary to develop and implement the strategy in your own life. You're gonna find that this is an interesting uh, course that you're about to embark. It's, uh, it's of course not made for financial professionals per se, it's more for the consumer. And uh, we're going to, we have outlined this course in such a way that you are gonna get some very basic information that you'll be able to understand at the, si at the same time deep enough that you will see that the policy that Nelson Nash initiated for the infinite banking concept is, uh, is the policy that you need to be looking at. So in the next video, I'll be talking to you specifically about what this policy is and what it means, what does infinite banking mean.